I have two Wi-Fi mesh systems from Eero. I got the Pro 6E and I got the new Pro 7 and I'm gonna compare them to each other. So I've done a whole bunch of speed test, range tests and all that stuff. Have all those numbers right here. We'll go over that momentarily. And I did test with the following Wi-Fi 7 devices. I also happen to have the iPhone 16 Pro Max, but this one can't go quite as fast as the other two, at least in the case of the Pro 7 where it actually can go faster. So if you're here just for a short answer, the Pro 7 is better than the Pro 6C. The question is, is it noticeably better in your specific situation? That's kind of where the answer lies. But, you know, just from a general perspective, yes, the Pro 7 is clearly an upgrade from the Pro 6C. Starting with the Pro 6C, we have two ports. We have a 2.5 gigabit port and we have a gigabit port right here. It's also powered via USB-C and they recommend using the power supply that it comes with. So now these are auto sensing ports, which means that no matter which one you hook up your uh, modem to or ONT or DSL, it will automatically figure that out. Now, this can handle internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits, however, the biggest downfall with the Pro 6E is that it only has one fast 2.5 gigabit port. The other port is a gigabit port. So if your internet speeds are two gigs and it goes in at two gigs, you use this port. Once you come out, you just capped your speeds to gigabit speeds. So that's the problem with the Pro 6E. Now, if you have internet speeds up to gigabit, then it doesn't really matter because you're not, because your internet is already limiting limiting it to gigabit speeds anyway so not much of a difference there and then we basically have the factory reset on the bottom so now we get to the pro 7 which kind of looks like a mini max 7 it's also not quite as fast as that we got some vents and stuff we got some vents here and got some vents here unlike the pro 6c that doesn't have any vents at least any visible vents so a little bit better for cooling not that the pro 6c is bad or anything like that i haven't experienced any issues with overheating or anything like that so just pointing that out but the main advantage with the pro 7 well there's a few advantages other than it's a wi-fi 7 system versus the pro 6c is the wi-fi 6c but the pro 7 we have two five gigabit ports so there's no slowdown so it not only can it go faster than 2.5 it could go up to five gigabit speeds there's also no slowdown when you're coming out. So in my case, because my internet speeds are five gigabits, I can actually go in at five and come out at five. Now, when I do a speed test over ethernet, I don't quite get to that five gig number. I get very, very close to it, like 4.7, 4.8, um, just because there's some overhead or something, but very, very good overall. And then again, powered via USB-C and we got the factory reset and uh, yeah, no buttons or anything on the bottom. These are the power supplies, again, powered via USB-C, USB-C right here. And they're both pretty much identical in terms of power drive, 27 watts. There's some different text here, but they're both at 27 watts. So it takes the same amount of power. Jumping to internet speed test, as you guys already know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds. For me, that would be five gigs up and down. And as I mentioned earlier, we are being capped to those. We are capping those speeds with the Pro 6 to 2.5. And as soon as we come out, we're actually capping that to gigabit speed. So on an ethernet connected device, like my computer, I get just under gigabit speeds. With the Pro 7, as I mentioned earlier, I get 4.7, 4, 4.8 gigs. So not much of a cap there. So big, big, big advantage if you have internet speeds above gigabit, essentially. Now, Wi-Fi devices are a different story because at, with the Wi-Fi device, if I'm doing a speed test near the main router, I still have access to up to 2.5 gigabit speeds. But the internet speed tests are not quite as fast. So looking at the numbers, as we could see that for the Pro 6C, we got basically a little above 1.6 down and we got almost 1.5 up. Whereas with the Pro 7, it's definitely way, way faster. We got above 3.1 gigabits on the download and almost 1.9 on the upload. So definitely an improvement there. So if you have faster speeds, you will notice a difference. But to find the true performance of these mesh systems, I need to do a local speed test. So I make my computer into the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer. And in the case of wired or wireless backhaul, I go from Wi-Fi device to the secondary one, which then jumps to the primary one, which then goes to my computer. So looking at these results, we can see there's a drastic improvement in speeds, especially in the upload section. So that's where that's pretty much where the drastic improvements are. The other improvements are pretty good, but not compared to that. 
So we could see that huge, huge difference on the single router configuration between the Pro 7 and the Pro 6C. Huge, huge difference. On the wired backhaul, we can also see we got almost the same numbers, uh, pretty much, for the Pro 7 as we did for the single router. But for the Pro 6C, this is what I'm talking about. As soon as we get out of these gigabit ports, we're capping our speed. So the secondary one, even though we go in to the 2.5, because we're coming out of the gigabit, it caps those speeds. And I actually talk about this in the setup guide. Then we get to wireless backhaul, and this is another pretty big difference with Wi-Fi 7 mesh systems. Historically speaking, I test a lot of mesh systems, and I've noticed that Wi-Fi 7 mesh systems do really, really well on wireless backhaul, and it's mainly, well, there's a few advantages, uh, but one of the advantages is MLO, multi-link operation, which allows multiple bands to be used at the same time to create even a better connection. Whereas with the Pro 6C, it's not really designed that way. So, and we could see that, again, a pretty big difference in wireless backhaul performance between the two. Next, we get to range test. Now, range will vary drastically by location. If you're in between floors, thick walls, more obstructions, typically it goes less range, basically. But both of these are tested in the same exact environment, same area, so, they are relative to each other. So looking at these speeds, definitely a drop in both cases. A bigger drop with the Pro 7 because we are coming from a faster speed. And then at 50 feet, this is when I'm actually outside my place. And we're still getting really, really good numbers for the Pro 7. Still very, very usable numbers for the Pro 6C as well. But the Pro 7 is really outshining it. And at 100 feet, literally across the street, I'm still getting some really good numbers. Uh, but the difference is getting a lot closer to each other. So the further away I'm getting, the closer in speeds that they're getting to each other. For setup and configuration, use the Eero app. It's available both on iOS and on Android. And it's a very simplified app. It kind of walks you through the process of setting it up. If you guys want to know how to mix and match wired and wireless backhaul or add more ports and things like that and actually see the connections, I actually have a separate setup guide video that I actually show the connections and everything. Very, very useful video if you guys haven't seen it. Link below if you guys are interested. Um, but it's a very simplified app. You get one Wi-Fi name, so you cannot separate out the bands. You can't have a separate 2.4 and a 5 uh, and a 6, basically. It's all combined into one. You can have a separate guest SSID. And um, there's not a whole lot of customization. It does have WPA3 support. Um, you could set your DHCP and things like that. So it does have like the basic stuff, but not a whole lot more than that. Now, if you want parental controls, that does require a separate subscription. So keep that in mind with either one of these. And in that subscription, you get additional things like VPN and a few other things, but that does require a separate subscription. So just keep that in mind. However, just normally using it, they do give the main options. But if you're someone that really wants to tinker with things, change options and things like that, I typically recommend ASUS Mesh Systems for something like that. So with all that said, which one is worth getting and why? Well, let's start off with if you have the Pro 6C, is it worth upgrading to the Pro 7? I would say if you have up to gigabit speeds, no. I personally don't think it's worth the upgrade. Um, if you don't have either one of these and you're planning on getting one, if you have internet speeds of up, above gigabit, 100%, I personally would recommend the Pro 7. If you have internet speeds less than gigabit, then that's a, because the Pro 6C is a really good system. So if it's on sale or it's, it's really cheaper, I would honestly go for the Pro 6C to save some money because um, there's not a huge difference under gigabit speeds between them. It's really, this thing starts to shine once we pass the gigabit speeds. But overall, they're both really good systems, and really that's kind of what I'm going to break it down to. Above gigabit, I'd go with this. Below gigabit, probably go with this. Is it worth upgrading to this? No, if you're at gigabit speeds or less. If you're above gigabit speeds, 100%. I, <laughs> I personally would upgrade. That, that's all I'm saying. So let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.